All right, let's practice. Where's the, where's the right mouse? Oh, okay, here's some guides. So halogens, and then we'll practice. Halogen, so uh, the last column, chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they generally only form one bond, so you're gonna find them on the ends of things, okay? They can't be in the middle because they don't have two arms to, to bond. So they're gonna be on, usually on one end. Oxygen forms two bonds, so it can be in a carbon chain, or it could be at the end of a carbon chain, terminated with hydrogen, um, or it could be a double bond because it forms two bonds, it can double bond to a carbon. So there's a few different ways we can find the oxygen. So um, if we kind of watch for these patterns, as we do more and more of these, as we see more and more uh, of these organic compounds, we will start being more familiar with where the oxygen shows up. And we're going to talk about these functional groups that are on your paper also. But if we have a carbon, oxygen, carbon, we're going to start calling that an ether group. If we have an OH at the end, that's called a hydroxy group. If we have a double bond uh, to a carbon with two, this, these R groups are just telling us there's something else there. We don't know what it is. Then that's called a carbonyl group. And those are here. We'll talk more about those. And then the last uh, pattern that we're going to watch for is ammonia or nitrogen, excuse me. Nitrogen forms three bonds. So it's going to probably form an amino group where we have nitrogen with two hydrogens and connected to a carbon. Nitrogen can also be in the middle because it does form those two bonds. So you can find it. Um, it could go carbon, nitrogen, carbon with a hydrogen to fill in the third bond on nitrogen. Again, these, we call these heteroatoms. They're not carbon, they're not hydrogen. They are usually found in organic compounds. I guess common, commonly found in organic compounds. Okay, let's go ahead and practice. I want you to try this one. So try to draw, and this is just like we're drawing the Lewis structure. So draw this. So kind of follow those rules. Draw the carbon chain, draw any heteroatoms, draw in any hydrogens, make sure the bond rules are satisfied. Make sure carbon has four, make sure hydrogen has one, oxygen has two bonds. 
Let's go ahead and, are you ready? Do you have an idea? Your idea? Okay. Let me see where it's stuck. Oh, the pen is not working out. Yes. Oh, I want not right. So I would draw the carbon chain. So I have carbon and carbon. And then I'm going to fill in as many hydrogens as I can. Usually, we're going to fill this in symmetrically. So if we have two carbons and two hydrogens, there's going to probably be one hydrogen on each side. Okay. So I'm going to put a hydrogen over here and a hydrogen over here. So a lot of the time in chemistry, things like to be symmetrical if they can be. So that's where we're going to start. All right. And then hydrogen has enough electrons, or yeah, has enough bonds, has enough electrons. Hydrogen over there has enough electrons. So what do we need to do in the middle? Carbon only has... So um, we can't add lone pairs because carbon doesn't have lone pairs. Yep. We can triple bond the carbon. That's good. So now carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. Carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. Hydrogen has one bond. Hydrogen has one bond. Okay. All right. So there's going to be some like that in Alex. So you help to draw the molecule. I'll let you just practice in Alex. Okay, we're going to skip to the next scene. So this is... Um, the bond angle chart. So you have part of this in your notes, so you don't have to write all this down. Um, so have we talked about, we talked about Vesper before. Do you remember that? It was called, do you remember what the Vesper stood for? Do you remember talking about it though? Vesper? Okay, that sounds familiar. Good. So Vesper stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. So basically, Electrons repel. Do we care about this? Electrons, oops. Oh, this pen was gonna work for us. Ugh. Okay. E electrons repel. So if we have different groups of electrons around an atom, they're going to spread out as far as they can from each other. So the most stable arrangement keeps the groups, these electron groups, that are all attached to the same atom, the central atom, they're going to be as far away from each other as they can be. So if we have a linear molecule, or if we have an atom that has two electrons on, or two electron groups on it, then those are going to stay as far away from the, as from each other as it can be, which is 180 degrees. Okay, and that's in your table. So if we have two electron groups and there's two atoms with zero lone pairs, that's going to be linear. And the bond angle, this is the new part. We've talked about the electrons are going to stay far away from each other. It's going to be linear. The new part is the bond angle. So you have to either remember the bond angle or write it on your note card. So in the molecule we just drew, the carbon has two electron groups. We have the hydrogen bond here and the carbon-carbon bond here. So on this, this atom, we have two electron groups. The furthest those electron groups can be from each other is linear, okay? So that's gonna be the bond from this bond to this bond is 180. 
some of you have been working on trigonometry, trig and math recently. So hopefully these angles are going to stick with you if you, you remember these. Okay, so like half of the way around the uh, circle, the unit circle is 180, I guess it shows. Okay. Um, the next one is if we have three groups. So if we look at, we're just, we have to find one atom. So this atom has three groups. We have a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a carbon bond. Carbon to hydrogen. So from here to here to here, that, that bond angle from the carbon hydrogen to the carbon carbon bond is 120 degrees. Okay. So we have bond angles here. We have bond angles here. So if we have, uh, three groups around a central atom, then the bond angle is 120. And that makes sense. We can take 360 divided by three, that gives us 120. Um, the next one is a little bit trickier. This one I think is harder to remember, so I would write that on, on my note card. You can do geometry and you can show this, or we're just gonna accept this as a fact. Um, but you can go online and people have derived this. And they talk about because it's a 3D shape. So instead of a flat, uh, instead of going around in 360, like this one, we're just going in uh, 360 all the way around. This one is we're talking about a bond angle that's coming off of a tetrahedral. So this one gets a little bit more complicated. Um, but if we have a carbon and it has four groups attached to it, that is going to be a tetrahedral bond. That's going to be 109.5. So that's one that you need to remember. It is on the chart also. So I would put at least part of this chart on my note card because you're going to have to identify the bond angles. Okay. Questions on this? So this is just this is just kind of like things you need to know, but. Um, most of them make sense. This one makes a little less sense, but you can derive it. You can show it with your map, with geometry. Okay. All right. I think that this is, I don't think you have to do this, but you'll see this a lot in chemistry. Um, you might have seen this before. Have you seen like the wedges and the dashes on organic structures? Okay. So if you see that, this is what they're trying to show. And you might have to show this um, if you take more chemistry or I don't know if your job, you need to look at the chemical. Um, the, if we have a tetrahedral, then we have four groups around some molecule or some atom like carbon. So carbon we use a lot because it often forms tetrahedrals because it has four, uh, four bonds. It forms four bonds. So two of the bonds will be in the plane of the board. So these ones are in the plane. So we imagine them just sitting in the board. And then one of the bonds is going to poke out, and one of them is going to poke back into the board. So we actually have this. This is a good example. You're not the best example. Let me pull this. Okay, so this this would be an example of we have a central atom with four groups around it, and if we sat it in the plane, we have two that sit in the plane of the board, and two, one that pokes forward and one that pokes backwards. So that's what they're trying to show with this. This is called uh, wedge and dash model. So we can also draw or model. I guess we're not drawing. So this would be the same thing. So if we have um, a methane molecule, we have two hydrogens that fit in the plane of the board, one that pokes forward, one that pokes backward. So for the forward one, we use the wedge. In the For the back one, we use the, the hash, the line, the dash line. Okay, so if you see something like that, that's what they're trying to draw. They're trying to draw the 3D structure because the 2D structure really is important for the shape of the molecule, which also is how the molecule behaves. OK. 
table. All right, and you have this chart in your table. This is from Alex. Uh, okay. So don't forget that water is bent. We talked about water, like six, chapter five, chapter six, maybe it's chapter four. So this is not water, but if we imagine that this is oxygen in the middle, we have two hydrogens and then two lone pairs. So we still have four electron groups. Anytime you have four electron groups around the central atom, that's going to be tetrahedral. Okay. okay. Um. Okay, so some tips. So when we're so like this question would be, what's the bond angle around oxygen? So oxygen is your central atom. How many electron groups are around oxygen? We have two bonds and we have two lone pairs. So we have four. So then if we look at our table, if we have four groups then our bond angle is approximately 109.5. So there's some like uh, details. If you have a lone pair, lone pairs like can spread out more. You will talk about that in a different class if you need to know that. Um, but we're gonna say it's about 109.5 because we have these four groups, one, two, three, four. Okay, how about the bond angles around this carbon? What would the bond angles around that carbon be? Yes, 109.5, because this carbon, this carbon also has one, two, three, four, uh, four electron groups around. So watch out for any lone pairs that you have, because those also count towards your electron groups. Okay, um, the next part is our chemical groups. So this is also on, I think we'll come back to functional groups. But you might have to identify these different groups. So this is a methyl group. If we have carbon with three hydrogens, this part is the methyl. The R just says it's attached to something. So R is just like generic, like we have something else there. Um, so CH3 is a methyl group. Uh, CH2 is a methylene group. Hydroxy, we talked a little bit about that. We have oxygen bonded to a hydrogen at the end of something. A carbonyl group, we have a carbon bonded to a double, double bonded to an oxygen. And then amino group is nitrogen with two hydrogens. So you're gonna have to click on the atoms that go with your group. So again, this is, you can't use this paper on your note card. So you're either going to have to memorize these or memorize some of them or write them all on your one-sided note card for chapter 11. Okay, so that is all for um, our notes. I did find some examples.